It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party. It's the 202. It's the 202. Hi and hello, everyone. Coming up on the 202, they're poets, rappers, and musicians, plus they're champions of social justice. And with a name like the Cornell West Theory, you can best believe there's a message in their music. And if you're a fan of the iconic Soul Train TV show, you probably heard about American Soul. That's the BET series that dramatized the story behind the popular show. Well, the son of Soul Train creator Don Cornelius was executive producer on the project, and we'll hear from him. And over there is DJ Damo, who will be turning the tables on the show today. How DJ you doing there? DJ Damo. <laughs> is that short for Dominique? Yes. Ah, how did I guess? Because you, you're a good guess because you're short. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I always thought of a DJ as an artist. Do you consider yourself an artist? Absolutely, it's an art form for sure. I don't know that I would consider myself an artist, but. <laughs> Okay. It's an art form. Well, it certainly is. Absolutely. Now, yeah. do you like to DJ like clubs, stadiums, parties? What's what's your favorite kind of thing? I can DJ any of those places. Okay. Um, my preference my preferences are really um, I think spaces where people are curating a specific type of energy. So those typically don't look like clubs. Oh. But um, I like different spaces for sure. Wow. Well, we're going to give you some energy today on the show. Absolutely. Too. I can All see right. that already. <laughs> today, that's our DJ. That's our DJ. <laughs> the Cornell West Theory Band makes what critics call smart, highly poetic, unguarded rap rock. That's why the band was endorsed by their namesake. That's right. In fact, Dr. West calls them a younger generation of highly talented, creative, and visionary artists. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cornell West Theory. Drink her sacred feminine essence. Kinetically stretch it fortified. I did any one to 45. I need to get back in that DeLorean fly. Change that bloodline timeline unnoticed. You felt hopeless, so you voted for Biff. Now we know 46 will be a straight fascist. War mother with a RHS glasses. Cloaked in plastic ashes. Classless mosh pit. A game of planetary dodgeball with bullets. Dodge this. Boom. Flesh and cheese carnage. Take that garbage out back and burn that. Try and spark that. Beverly Randolph hash. Lift up. The one who first planned this will now get it. Stop talk. Get up. Taking no knee, no hands up evil. Freeze, Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer. And I ain't taking no knee, no hands up evil. So you voted for Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer. Biff to the future, a trip to the future. With King Steel Thrones, don't reach, they might shoot you. Caveman 888, make America great. But see, it ain't all safe. See, it's a place where pale politicians who piss honesty, pimp poverty, picks policy, pimpology, grab cookie. A man bully, the bags fully submerged in the swamp. No concern for the hearts of men. 666 God, no new friends. The dog eat dinner with hogs. The living is hard. It ain't easy, it stay greasy. The pay's measly, my bay need me. Even, even do Greek can see us that it's so, so, so deaf. Seen it with my own too, can't believe in myself. And even if they say two, number three will be next. And even if the pay's cool, you still a slave to your check. No paddle, black water bought the border for a quarter. 
and Snapchat that to those reporters. Yeah. They shot that boy. You can see it on World Star. Mamas in DC want to know where their girls are. Yeah. But, 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 it seems the leader of the old world is on Twitter. Straight twerking for the whole world. Live at the disco. Heel toe, Heel real toe. low. Doing the shmoney dance. Live from Bifco. Limbo. You better like that vitro. The Santa clear seal. Cookie pop that pimpo. Millie rock on the cross. They be frisking. They gotta stop. Pay attention. This is after Obama's watch, 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 watch. And I ain't taking no knee. No hands up, evil. You freeze, Mr. Officer. Mr. Officer. Mr. Now we know 46 will be a straight fast. Hey, Trump. Hey, Trump. I ain't taking no knee. No hands up, evil. Freeze. Now we know 46 will be a straight fast. Don't let you go control. Mr. 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 Officer, and I ain't taking no knee, no hands up, people, freeze. Mr. Mr. Officer, Mr. 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 Officer, and I ain't taking no knee, no knee, freeze, freeze, freeze. Fantastic. We'll hear more from the Cornell West theory a little later. But next, everyone knows Soul Train, but not everyone knows what happened when the music stopped. BET's American Soul explores the struggle to make the dream of Soul Train come true. <laughs> Tony Cornelius talks to the 202 about the series. Don't go away. The 202 will be right back. Stay there. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. Welcome back to the 202. As Soul Train creator Don Cornelius used to say, peace, love, and soul. <laughs> and that was what the first nationally syndicated black music show brought to homes across the country each week. BET's American Soul tells the dramatic story behind its launch. Its executive producer, Tony Cornelius, son of Don Cornelius, talks to correspondent Janine Samuels about that and the foundation he created in honor of his father. Take a look. All right, so first of all, I just want to thank you for sitting down with us here on the 202, taking a break from your hectic schedule to join us today. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be on the 202. I've been hearing all kinds of wonderful things about the 202. And you know what? It's all true. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to say that I'm personally excited about this talk because I grew up in the Soul Train days and my sisters and I, I think, looked forward to watching Soul Train more than cartoons because we would literally battle it out. We would try to mimic the dances and it just was a part of our household. And it's a part, obviously, of American history in such a profound way. I'm just curious, how was life in your household in the Cornelius family? Well, you know, back then, you know, it was uh, it was exciting, you know, because everybody, I mean, when we went to school, people would say, you know, that's Don Cornelius' sons and Soul Train, and my gym teacher would call me out and Soul Train rather than my name, you know, <laughs> so that used to drive me nuts. But it was a very interesting time, and, and Soul Train really picked up steam, uh, something that uh, black America hadn't seen before. Uh, he really did everything that he wanted to do. He really wanted to uh, put us in a positive light. And he, 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 he accomplished that, he really did. Yes, and what's so interesting about it is it really is a part of our American history, but that was so much more than dance and having fun. That's the way we viewed it, right? It was just an opportunity to be entertained and have fun, but it was also a message of 
you know, African Americans having that right to freedom and having a place in America. Do you think that your father knew that that was the message that it would ultimately have? No question. I mean, that was his process to 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 show that black was beautiful and and create positive images. As he explains many many times, that the things that they would show on TV were always negative images. He wanted to do something that displayed positive images, and that was his mantra. That was something that he did every time he wrote the show, produced the show, uh, developed the show, uh, whether it be booking the acts whether it be, you know, directing the dancers, what to do, the cameramen, the sound men, the, the technical directors, the lighting guy, it was always based on making us look positive, you know. The lighting, you know, he was really serious about how we looked in lighting, you know. I mean, a lot of people don't know how to light black folk. He really talked to the lighting directors about lighting us and making us look beautiful, you know. Right, and all the many shades, right, of, Abs of black folks. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it's, it's really important to kind of, you know, understand the history behind it. And what's interesting is that some people, the younger people, the younger generations, don't really understand the significance of, for example, a Soul Train line. You cannot go to a party nowadays right. without, you know, someone saying, hey, let's do a Soul Train <laughs> line. <laughs> Well, so. he, coined, he coined it. He said he's always mentioned he went to parties back in his day. And one day he said, you know what, it would be nice to, to, to do a line on television. And it just happened, you know. And, and now, you know, when you think about a line, a gauntlet or whatever it may be, it's the Soul Train line. Yes. You know, I don't care where you are. All over the world, it's the Soul Train line. And yet, you always feel like you have to outdance the Absolutely. person that you because that's just how it was done on the show. Listen, some, there's some people that went down the line and couldn't dance, yeah. and you see that all the time at parties, but, but it's just fun. It's a lot of fun, you know? Yes. Now, you obviously personally had a relationship because you're in the family together, but then you, you were also behind the scenes, and you did a lot for Soul Train and making it the show that it is. So, well, I don't want to take all the credit for that. Now, he, he, you know, I talk about we have to get under somebody's wing. You know, we have to get to a point where we can find someone to show us how to do it, you know, and he showed me how to do it from the beginning, from running errands to to production, running to, to uh, you know, you name it, he showed it to me. I mean, basically, I started from the bottom up, you know, uh, a production assistant, uh, you know, producing, you just name it, I did it all. Right, you know? and then so speaking of that, kind of being able to live with him, work with him, what would you say maybe are the top one or two profound lessons that you learned from him that you still kind of hold, you know, dear and near right now? Well, there's one in particular that I think about all the time. I, th I remember when I w went to him and asked him for a raise, you know, and it's oh. always tough whether it's your father or whether it's someone you don't know to ask for more money, you know, because I need, I need to live just like everybody else, you know. So I came to him one, one day and I said, you know, Dad, I, I, I need a raise. And he looked at me and he said, you know, Tony, don't worry about the money. And when he said that to me, I thought he was crazy because we all have to make money. But then he went on to say, if you do good work, the money will come. If you do good work, the money will come. And then when I developed my own production companies, it's absolutely true. If you do good work, the money will come. But you have to be patient, you know. So uh, that was a lesson that I learned the hard way. Uh, but it's absolutely true, you know. Most definitely. And some of the, the lessons that you likely learned are coming out, and his legacy is coming out through this show, American Soul. It's on BET. Let's talk a little bit about that. It's a phenomenal show. No, I'm extremely excited about American Soul. I mean, uh, Sinqua Walls plays uh, my father. And we had a meeting early on before it even happened, and he wanted to know just what, what he needed to do. And we just talked about him being himself, but just capturing his essence. I mean, if you can capture someone's essence, that's all you need to do. So he, he does a fantastic job doing that. Uh, BET put their arms around it. Uh, we have fantastic writers, fantastic producers. Uh, we shoot in Atlanta. And it's just it just seems to morph into something that the audience uh, loves. It's been picked up for a second season. So we, uh, we're very happy about it. Yeah, and congratulations Thank for that. So, so tell us a little bit about the Don Cornelius Foundation. 
Well, the Don, Don Cornelius Foundation started uh, sometime in 2012. You know, my father passed February 1st, 2012. And, you know, when it first happened, I mean, it just destroyed our family. You know, just, just hearing about something like that was just so devastating because we'd never experienced it. Uh, I had a conversation with Stevie Wonder, and Stevie motivated me. He, he, he said, you know, Tony, get out there and do something about it. And by doing something about it meant going out and talking about mental health and suicide prevention. So it's been, it's been a wonderful thing at this point. It really opened me up to talk about it and, and <laughs> help people to, to face those realities as well. Because it's been a, what I call a, a veil of shame for a lot of people especially in the black community. So it's something that, I, that I'm very close to. All right, and why is D.C. Capitol Hill so important to um, bringing awareness to, you know, suicide? Well, that was an interesting uh, trip for me. Actually, it was the first time that I was on Capitol Hill to really hear what legislation was about when it comes to mental health, when it comes to veterans, when it comes to, you know, laws that we need in place in order to help those that, that, that need help. So the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention has been involved in, in, in these legislations for quite some time. So I thought it was a great opportunity for me to go out and meet some of the congressmen, whether they're congressmen from my own state, which is California, uh, Illinois, where I'm from, uh, as well as parts of, parts of New York. So I got a chance to talk to some real powerful women and men that are that are in Congress today. All right, wonderful. And of course, we love the 202, right? right? But what else do you love about the city? Well, you know, what I really love about this city is it's the, the blackness. You know, when you when you get off the, the plane, it's just you just see black folk, you know, and I love that they're doing well. You know, I mean, obviously, you see some things that could do better. You know, there's homelessness everywhere, you know, in California, Chicago and D.C., and New York. But uh, I really, I really have a great feeling about Washington D.C. I mean, this was called chocolate. This wasn't called Chocolate City for nothing. <laughs> you know? So, I, I really enjoyed my stay here. Excellent. And now, is there anything that you enjoy doing when you come here? In well, I, I, hopefully the weather's always right, but I love the food here. I mean, the food is magnificent. You can get all kinds of tastes here, whether it be soul food, Indian food, you know, French food, Italian food, and I, I, really, I, I enjoyed all of it. Well, wonderful. We appreciate you being here. Again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Well. I want to remind everyone, American Soul on BET, heading into another season, Absolutely. which is amazing. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. And as your father would always say in parting, if you wouldn't mind joining me, we wish you love, love peace, <laughs> peace, and, and soul. Like Soul Train and American Soul, we've got more music coming at you. Stay tuned for more of the music and the message of the Cornell West Theory. The 202 will be right back after this. It's the 202. 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 Welcome back to the 202 and the show's musical poets and champion of social justice, the Cornell West Theory. So just talking to these guys, you know you're going to get schooled. So we were watching this performance, and, and it's more uh, not only music, but sort of uh, performance theater. So I wanted to know, is that all planned or that's what you feel when you're, when you're performing? It's, uh, I, I would say it's part spontaneous, part planned chaos. Planned um, chaos. It's inspiration from DC Go-Go, Backyard, Junkyard, and the way that people in the city react to Go-Go music when they hear it. I was inspired heavily by Bob Marley, who to me was the most visual Excuse me, the most visually captivating performer, performer ever. Because Bob could stand and hold his hand in the air and make you stuck just watching that one movement. Or he could be frenetic and, you know, um, the Crumpers out in LA as well. Shout out to the, the uh, Crumpers. Okay, okay. Um, 
it's they gave us some inspiration as also a, an excuse to have like a, a child, yeah, a grown you know, child too. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the stuff you can't do normally in the world, we can do on the stage. And we were heavily influenced by punk rock. Because bad brains. Yes. Okay, I love that. Shout yeah, out to Bad Brains. I said this can't be choreographed because it's fun and then you know and the yeah, music it's, it's, is it's a you. little Bad Brains, a little Fugazi. Um, those are artists from DC's punk scene. Uh, they might call it something else, just music. So, uh, tell us about what specifically led you to be inspired enough to title yourselves the Cornell West Theory. What was it about his message uh, in particular? One, to me, Dr. West speaks to the least of us, meaning the people that are usually overlooked. We hear a lot of talk about the middle class. That's usually the only thing that I hear. I, I, I'm, you know, I would be surprised if I ever even heard them mention the upper class. They usually do say the rich, but you never hear of the lower class. You never hear of the people in public housing, the people who are homeless. So Dr. West speaks to that um, the same way Jesus Christ did. So it's something that just resonated with us because in our music, we want to speak for and to those people, but make sure that the voice is amplified so it's heard at 1600 Penn. So not only do you have the name, but uh, Dr. West has also performed with, with yeah, the group. Tell us about that. Shout out to Dr. West. On every album. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. Album. Everyone, yeah. the first two, the the first two he was on in the entirety, as the project started going, we would splice him in here and there, but Dr. West is always uh, a, the pre a presence. He's always the ghost, the sixth man of the Cornell West area. Well, we want to feel some more of those Dr. Cornell West vibes. Yes. Another performance? We, we, yes, we will, and I will preface this by saying we are, in effect, sort of like a parliament funkadelic because you got the Cornell West theory, but the music behind the Cornell West theory is the Dirty, dirty church. church. I know about that and Dirty the Church. Behind, and the music behind the Dirty Church is the music behind the Cornell West theory. So they're, in, they're interchangeable. Shout out to Bob and George Clinton. All right. We'll do it for us. Thank you. Sides and slides and time and time again collide and glides through fly as high as finding a sky can declines and dies. Repeat my feet too deep. Compassion and rap beat spirit and meat. Evil only wins cause you weaken your seat. The creeps beneath eat sleep. Awake eternal. See journey for complete peace. Humanity's burning on a gurney. I hope that the healing waters leak. Just Leap. breathe. Just breathe, revolve, and seek, leap, speak in mind of God, and reach into all calls, and all calls, all the love song, God march, all our calls, walls, forever fight, come on, cold jaws of dogs, eternally on, sub up, spawn, and hold, palms evolve. evolve. So I grind till I climb on that other side of the line. Just a light up, brother, no one's help. So I grind till I climb on that other side of the line. So I grind till I climb on that other side of the line. See, I've committed my life to seeking truth and finding jaw. And these are some lessons that got learned. Real hair, fake booties, and true religion. Huh. They can't even spell it, but they can smell it. It's the world on fire, going insane. Another brother died from the cost in his head game. Man, 
I know exactly how the freak it feels to see your family rolling down the hill. Threw away my gift and I was thinking how low can I get? When a notice on my door said evicted, there was no script to stick to, just guns to stick to. Seen them in my face, point blank, and they was meant to. See if I continue or quote them like a menu. Huh, I'm sharpen like that number two pencil again to The markers in front of me, lyrics is the stencil. The stuff that I've been through is weighing on my brain, flowing in my veins. My failure, my pain, my shame is riding on trains, looking for planes, not looking for a hashtag or if people know my IG name. It's bigger than fame. It ripples through the sewers and it enters the drain. It cripples the maneuvers and the shooter gets framed. And you get named, but that's okay, Commandante. That's life. I want the whole. So I grind till I climb on that other side of the line. Hey, 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 Anita. Hey, Anita. Hey, so I grind till I climb on that other side of the line. Hey, 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 So I, so, I, so, I, so, I, so I cry till I climb on the other side of the line. Cry, cry, the planet divides him. Sides and slides and time and time again colliding and glides to fly as high as finding a sky can declines and dies. Repeat. My feet are weak. Same, 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 same. See, I've committed my life to seeking truth and finding God. These are some lessons that God learned. Real hair, fake booties, and true religion. They can't spell it, but the, they can smell it. It's the world on fire, gone insane. Another brother died from the cross, and his head came. Man, I know exactly how the freak it feels to see your family rolling down the hill. They threw away my gifts, and I was thinking, how low can I get? When they notice on the door said a victim, there was no script to stick to. Just guns to stick to. See them in my face, point blank, and they was meant to. See if I continue, or hold up like a menu, or sharpen like that number two pencil with pencil. The markers in front of the me, lyrics is the sensu. Everything I've been through is weighing on my brain. Flowing in my veins, my failure, my pain, my shame is riding on trains while I'm looking for planes. Not looking for a hashtag or ID it's name. name. It's bigger name. than frame. It ripples through the sewers and it gets to the drain. It cripples your maneuvers when the shooter gets named. And you get framed. But it's so okay, Commandante. Rock that, that slice. Who was the whole thing? So I grind till I grind on the other side of the line. The line, 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 the Cornell West theory. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fantastic, y'all. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we will be back next time with more of the 202. Thanks to our guests today, the Cornell West theory, and Tony Cornelius, the correspondent, Janine Samuels, of course. My co-host, Michelle Rock. That's right. Thanks to all of you for watching. We appreciate you. Furman and I will see you next time on the 202. Home of that good live music. Come on. Live on set, oh, oh, live I like on that. Cool. <laughs> the best hope, so don't get no tighter. Yeah. Furman and Michelle can't get, get no writer. Taxation, no representation. No. But the 202 repping for the capital nation. Uh -huh. So from 703 to the 301. Yeah. yeah, we all come to have some fun. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party in the 202. Yeah. It's the 202. Yeah. This the 202. This the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party it's in the, the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202.